the TU-141 Strish and its little siblings, TU-143 RIS and TU-243 RIS-D, are the most notable Soviet-built unmanned aerial vehicles, shortly UAV. Despite their old ages, they still managed to make it to the headlines. In particular, the crash of a Ukrainian TU-141 in Croatia has raised some questions about the effectiveness of NATO's air defense in Europe. Now, we are investigating the TU-141, 143 and 243, the old but still effective menace. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares. The TU-141 and TU-143 are actually different UAV types, but simply the first one is a scaled up variant of the second. Also, the TU-243 is the modernized and slightly modified model of the TU-143. Therefore, we found it appropriate to investigate them as individual members of a family. The root of these UAVs goes back to the 1960s. Although the Soviet engineers had developed a radio-controlled variant of the Tupolev TB-1 bomber in the late 1930s, the USSR had not been interested in this works for a long time. However, with the emergence of the surface-to-air missile batteries in the 1950s, the Soviet army needed unmanned aerial targets for training. Initially, the USSR equipped some aircraft such as the MiG-15, MiG-17, IL-28 and TU-4 with remote control instruments and used them as missile training targets. Later, Lavachkin began working on a dedicated unmanned aerial target called LA-17. The company also developed the reconnaissance variant of the UAV called LA-17R. But the performance of the LA-17R, which made its first flight in 1963, did not satisfy the Soviet armed forces. Before that, Tupolev had begun to develop a mobile nuclear supersonic medium-range cruise missile called TU-121 in 1957. But after trials, the USSR cancelled the project in favor of the ballistic missiles. So, Tupolev decided to use the TU-121's design to develop a strategic reconnaissance UAV. The fruit of this project, TU-123 Yastrip, made its first flight in 1961. The result was satisfactory. Tupolev produced 52 TU-123 for the Soviet Air Force. This achievement paved the way for the acceptance of the UAVs as reconnaissance platform in the USSR. But the TU-123 was an expandable UAV, parachuting its payload to the ground for recovery. So, Tupolev decided to develop its reusable variant called TU-139 Yastrip 2. This UAV remained as experimental. Still. The experiences gained from the project paved the way for the development of the TU-141 and TU-143. The works on these UAVs began almost simultaneously. They had similar appearances, but due to the difference between their designated flight range criteria, the TU-141 was larger than the TU-143. In fact, according to the initial plan, these two UAVs would be considerably different in many ways. For example, the Soviet Air Forces demanded the TU-141 to have transonic or low supersonic flight capability to avoid NATO's air defense systems. Also, another requirement was to have ski landing gear. But after the extensive studies, the Tupolev engineers convinced the Soviet military staff that these requirements would cause an excessive increase in weight and costs. So, the TU-141 turned into just a scale-up variant of the TU-143. The short-range TU-143 made its first flight in December 1970 and entered the Soviet Air Force's service in 1976. The dispute between Tupolev and the Soviet Air Force had caused delays on the TU-141 program. This tactical UAV made its maiden flight in December 1974. Because the power plant of the UAV, the Tumansky KR-17A turbojet engine, was not mature yet, the first 10 pre-production TU-141s had the R9A300 engines. The later production models had the KR-17As. The UAV became operational in 1979. In 1981, the USSR demanded the development of the modernized variant of the TU-143. According to the initial plan, the new variant, called the TU-243, would have a similar aerodynamic layout and power plant with its predecessor. 
but the new UAV would have a new navigation and flight system and an updated reconnaissance equipment. Also, Tupolev would reconfigure the replacement of the mission equipment and enlarge the fuel tanks to extend the range. The first prototype of the Tu-243 made its first flight in July 1987, but the collapse of the USSR caused delays. By using this time, Tupolev worked on new improvements on the mission equipment. Also, they replaced the previous power plant with the more powerful and lighter TRZ-117A turbojet engine. After these changes, the Tu-243 entered the Russian Air Force's service in 1999. Except for the size, all three UAVs have similar design features. Their fuselage are made of mainly aluminum alloy and some parts are composites. The all-metal triangular low wings have a 58 degree sweep angle at the leading edges. The air intake is above the fuselage and the tail is above it. The main engines are arranged at an angle of 4.5 degrees to the axis of the aircraft. There are different solid propellant boosters for each UAV under the rear end of fuselage to launch. These UAVs, which can be launched by towed or mobile launchers, perform their cruises, maneuvers, returns and landings autonomously. The Tu-143 and Tu-243 have a low altitude radio altimeter and an altitude input unit for low level reconnaissance missions. The landings are carried out using a parachute system located in a fairing in the rear fuselage above the turbojet nozzle. These UAVs can carry either a photo camera or a TV camera located in the interchangeable pod. There are day and infrared options for both types of cameras. The ground control unit can simultaneously receive the data via radio during a reconnaissance mission with the TV camera. However, the UAVs with the photo camera have to return to access the films. The Tu-143 and Tu-243 can also carry radiation reconnaissance equipment. The Tu-141 tactical UAV can perform reconnaissance missions deep behind the enemy line. The mission definition of the Tu-143 and Tu-243 is to conduct reconnaissance missions over the battlefield. The Tu-141, Tu-143 and Tu-243 are the given names of the UAVs. The complete reconnaissance systems, including the ground control units and other components, are called VR2 Strish, VR3 RIS, VR3 D RIS D, respectively. Belarus, North Korea, Russia, Syria, and Ukraine are still operating these UAVs. Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, and its successor, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, Iraq, Romania, and the USSR are the former users. The Tu-141 has a length of 14.33 meters, a wingspan of 3.88 meters, a wing area of 10 square meters and a height of 2.44 meters. Its gross weight is 5,370 kilograms. The UAV has a 19.6 kN Tumansky KR-17A turbojet engine. Its top speed is about 1,110 km per hour, while its cruise speed is 1,000 km per hour. The range of the Tu-141 is 1,000 km. The service ceiling of the UAV is 6,000 meters, in other words, 19,685 feet. The scaled-down Tu-143 has a length of 8.06 meters, a wingspan of 2.24 meters, a wing area of 2.9 square meters, and a height of 1.55 meters. Its gross weight is 1,230 kilograms. The UAV has a 6.28 kN TRD TRZ-117 turbojet engine. Its cruise speed is 950 km per hour. The range of the Tu-143 is 180 km. The service ceiling of the UAV is 1000 m, in other words 3280 feet. The Tu-243 has a similar size to the Tu-143 except its fuselage is 0.23 m longer. Its gross weight is 1,400 kg. The UAV has a range of 360 km and its service ceiling is 5,000 meters, in other words 16,400 feet. The Tu-143 and Tu-243 have only a 13-minute endurance. During the Soviet Air Force service, the Tu-141s and Tu-143s were generally deployed in Europe. Because they had about 5 launch operational life, the USSR rarely used them for reconnaissance missions against NATO. Especially the Tu-141s were generally present in major Warsaw Pact military exercises. But the Tu-143 had a busier career. The Syrian Arab Air Force used them over Israel for reconnaissance missions during the 1982 Lebanon War. 
but they were not as efficient as the Israeli UAVs, which played a critical role in the victory. Also, the USSR operated the Tu-143s to detect the Mujahideen positions and movements during the invasion of Afghanistan. After the collapse of the USSR, Russia has used many Tu-141s and Tu-143s as target drones. But the Tu-141 has resurrected in an unexpected place, Europe, in the 2010s. After the 2014 annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation, Ukraine began to reactivate many Soviet vintage weapon systems. One of them was the Tu-141. The Ukrainian Air Force has used these UAVs for reconnaissance missions over the Donbass region. The separatists claim that at least one of them was shut down. After the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine began, Ukraine has continued using them. A Ukrainian Tu-141 crashed in Vinitsia on March 8, 2022. Three days later, another one was reported shut down over Crimea and crashed near the city of Krasna Perekosk. Also, the Ukrainian Air Assault Forces managed to shoot down at least one Russian Tu-243. But the most shocking event is that on March 10, 2022, a Ukrainian Tu-141 crashed in Zagreb, Croatia, over 550 kilometers from Ukraine. Fortunately, there were no casualties. Croatian authorities initially could not figure out where the drone came from. The usual suspect was Russia. But the Russian embassy in Zagreb stated that the Russian armed forces had not used the Tu-141 since 1991. After the investigation, Croatia declared that the Tu-141 belonged to Ukraine. It was carrying a bomb and sent to attack a target in Russia. Because of a navigation error, this Tu-141 had passed over Romania and Hungary and then crashed in Croatia after it went out of fuel. Due to the sympathy for the Ukrainians, Zagreb has not gone hard for Kyiv. But Croatians are disappointed with NATO, as are the Hungarians and Romanians. This incident has revealed a severe shortcoming of NATO's joint air defense network. Today NATO is under the risk of war against Russia and an obsolete UAV passed over the airspace of three member countries undetected. Later, on March 15, 2022, the Croatian MiG-21s and French Rafales began to patrol over Croatia as a part of a joint exercise. Since the incident, the Hungarian Air Force is also on alert. On March 11, the Hungarian Air Defense detected two suspicious radar signals and the Gripen scrambled to intercept the possible threats. But they found no suspicious flying object. The recent conflicts have proved that the preparation of the Russian armed forces against the UAV threat is not sufficient. But the Tu-141 revealed that NATO also has to reorganize and recalibrate its air defense against the drones. So, we should see that the Tu-141 and its little siblings, Tu-143 and Tu-243, will most likely pave the way for a change in air defense concepts in the West. They have proved that even a 1970 vintage UAV can undetectably penetrate NATO's air defense and overcome the most sophisticated air defense networks. This fact makes the Tu-141, Tu-143 and Tu-243, which have the potential of shaping the future, the true legends. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.